Today, I'll show you how to make white outlines on your transparent background images to create stickers with them. Hi guys, I'm Omar and I hope you're having a great day. This video is an update of a previous tutorial I uploaded. Um, given that some changes have been made to the free online software I used on that video. Okay, so when creating stickers with cutting machines, um, these uh, cutting machines software need images with crisp and smooth edges to recognize them and make a clean cut around them. If your original image has a fairly textured edge or some transparency on or near the borders, these white, white outlines can turn out very irregular and you'll need to go over them and refine them to smooth them out. So uh, it's a clean line for your cutting machine software to read it and make a precise cut without tearing the stick of paper. I'll show you how to use the free online software called Pixel R, which I used on my previous video. This is a very powerful internet-based image editor that allows you to do as many edits as you want for free and also has a lot of very useful Photoshop-like features. Okay, so open your internet browser and type pixelr.com on your search bar. That is P-I-X-L-R.com. Hit enter and you'll be prompted to a welcome screen with a couple of different image editor options. To create white outlines, a Pixel RE version is the one we need. So click on the top tab and a new document will open. Once uh, the new document will open, um, you'll see a couple of pre-made templates and layouts that you can select to compose um, different images and collages or uh, social media posts, etc. But we'll be working with an image I have on my laptop. To open images on a hard drive, go to the left menu bar and left click on open image. Next, navigate to the folder your image is stored click on it, and then click on open. The image I'm working on is a very intricate watercolor bouquet of flowers. I painted these a while ago and digitized them to create a transparent background PNG image. It's an interesting image because it has a lot of semi-transparent areas and borders that sometimes can be tricky to work with when trying to offset that silhouette. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in learning how to clean up analog or physical artwork to make them sticker ready. Like I said, um, since my last video tutorial, Pixel R has made a few changes to the user interface and to the tools and filters available. So now there's actually a couple of ways you can do this. All three methods I will provide on this tutorial um, give a similar result with very minor differences. So you can give each one a try and decide which one works better for your image. Here's a comparison between all three methods done with Pixel R. To get started, we will create two copies of the main image or that background layer that you see right there. This is to have as a backup just in case things get a little bit out of control. To do this, right click on the layer's name and then click on the duplicate icon at the bottom of the dialog. Next, you are going to repeat this step to create another instance of the background layer. Just to keep things tidy, I'll rename the layers so I can keep track of where to apply the effects and filters. So right click on the layer's name and change that name of the top layer. Um, I'll rename this top layer original art, artwork and hit enter and then select the layer in the middle and change its name to WO. That's for white outline. Then hit enter. Now uh, there are three layers on your document. The bottom one is your backup layer that we are going to turn off or hide it by clicking on that little square to the right. The middle one is where we will apply the effects to create that white outline, so leave that one visible or active. And the top one is the original artwork that you can also leave visible for now. 
Most a transparent background PNG images have a canvas that fits the outermost edge of the image. This leaves no space to accommodate an offset edge that is completely visible. In this case, the white outline would be cut off on all four edges with the current canvas size, so we will make room on the canvas for that white outline. To do this, click on Image located on the top menu bar and select Canvas Size. To make sure the outline will fit, add a couple hundred pixels to each dimension. So that is 200 pixels to the width and 200 pixels to the height. Make sure the center anchor point is selected and click on Apply. And now to create the outline, we have three different methods. Method number one, using stroke. This first method uses the new stroke feature. To do this, click on the WO layer to select it left click the layer and then click on edit and then select stroke. Here you'll be able to adjust the color, size and opacity of that outline. Check that 100% opacity is selected. Avoid selecting the outline only option to make the next step easier. And also try using pure white for the color for now. This is to ensure you keep the outline color consistent. You can change this later. Click on apply and that's it. Don't worry about the small areas inside the outline. We will get rid of those in the next step. All these blank spaces in the center will be cut by your machine by default. If these spaces aren't big enough, they will look like the paper was teared accidentally instead of uh, being cut on purpose. To eliminate these holes, so to speak, there's a very simple trick. Select the wand, select tool, or press W on your keyboard, and adjust the settings. The mode to new selection, the tolerance to 10, the feather to zero, anti-alias and contiguous mode on, and simple all layers off. Next, you will click on an empty space on your canvas to select all the outer area. Then go to Select, Invert Selection, or press Ctrl-I on a PC or Command-I on a Mac to invert the selection that you just made. And finally, go to Edit and select Fill. Confirm that the color is the same as your stroke color, in this case, white. Set the blend mode to none and the opacity to 100%. Deselect preserve transparency to get rid of all those holes and then click on apply. That will get rid of all those little tiny empty spaces. If there are spaces you want to keep, make sure to add them to your selection before filling. For example, let's say we uh, want to keep this space right here because it is big enough for your machine to read and you want it cut. Um, and it also could be cut accurately by your machine, but we want to get rid of all the other spaces or holes that uh, there are um, in the uh, white outline. So select that one tool, click on an empty space to select all the outside canvas, and then set the mode of the selection tool to add to selection instead of new selection that is up on the top menu bar. Then select that empty space you want to keep and click on it. Then again, um, press Control i on a PC or Command-I on a Mac to invert the selection. Then go to Edit, Fill, and follow the settings I mentioned before. Now the final step is to refine that outline. This is something that sometimes you can skip if you have a good outline, but I have found that rarely the whole shape is ready to be cut, so we are going to get rid of all the sharp points and jagged edges that are left. So go to Select, Deselect or press Ctrl D on a PC, Command D on a Mac 
to get rid of the selection and start editing your outline layer. You can turn off the top layer if you want. That sometimes lets you see things better. Then select the draw tool or press B on your keyboard. Select any of the hard brushes uh, by clicking on the brush shape over the brush size arrow. And now turn the softness and the step all the way down to zero. Click on the menu bar to exit this dialog and select hard tip. Check that opacity is at 100%. Next, zoom in by clicking the zoom tool or pressing Z on your keyboard. Next, click on the area you want to zoom in and pressing the uh, B key on your keyboard, start painting. This might seem tedious, but it is very well spent time afterwards. Now, a good idea is to zoom in and out to see where you need to paint over. To do this fast, hold the shift key and click on your image while on zoom mode to zoom out. You can also uh, use the plus and minus buttons at the top properties bar to zoom in or zoom out. Now, also, it's a good idea to pan the image holding the space bar while clicking and dragging. It is much faster than using the scroll bars uh, at the top or to the side. When you're happy with the result, go to File, Save, or you can also press Ctrl S on a PC or Command S on a Mac. Change the file name, select the PNG file type and click on Download. A good rule of thumb that I use is to name your files adding a dash and then WO for white outline. That way, you can tell them apart from your original artwork. Select the folder to store the file and you are ready to send the image to your cutting machine. Now let's look at method number two, the outer glowing filter. I covered this method on my previous video and it's in a different place now, but it's so much better than before. In this case, I will hide the stroke white outline layer we did before. Let me rename it real quick so we can keep track of the layers. So this will be stroke white, uh, white outline and hit enter. Remember to click on that little square uh, box on the right to hide that layer. Now duplicate the original artwork layer at the top that is right click and click on the duplicate layer icon. And by clicking and dragging that copy, put that copy behind the original. Also rename it. So right click and type in the name glow white outline and hit enter. By doing this, you'll have both methods in a single document, but in different layers. So that way you can compare between the two. If you still see a white outline at this point, remember to hide the previous outline to see what we're doing. Make sure the newly created glow white outline is selected and then go to Filter, Outer Glow. On the Open dialog, select the size, set Feather to zero and Opacity to 100%. Click on Apply and you are done. Next, follow the steps I described earlier to get rid of the blank inner spaces. Select the one tool, click on an empty space, 
change mode to add selection and select areas you don't want filled. Control I on a PC or command I on a Mac to invert the selection and then go to edit, fill. Adjust your settings and apply. Finally, deselect and refine the outline using the draw tool. Once you are done, save your file. So Control S on a PC or Command S on a Mac. Change the name of the file to whatever suits you and click on download. Select your target folder and click on save. And now for method three, the outline filter. This is a new filter and Honestly, I don't really see any difference with the stroke filter. Anyways, follow the steps for the second method to duplicate the original artwork layer at the top. Move that copy down and change its name to Outline Filter White Outline to make it different to the other ones. Hide the previous outline layer by clicking on that little square to the right. And then we will apply the filter. Hit the layer to select it, go to Filter, Outline. Adjust the color and remember to use pure white for this. Also, you can adjust the size and uncheck Outline only. Then click on Apply and we are set. Like before, remove any inner blank spaces using the Wand tool and the Fill command. Remember to turn Preserve Transparency off so you get all those little holes uh, filled. And then click on Apply. Finally, deselect and refine the edges to remove sharp corners. You can do this by using the Draw tool. Save your file and that's it. These are um, the three methods to achieve slightly, maybe not even visible from afar, results that can work better on some cases. I hope this tutorial helped some of you that have asked for a long overdue update. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified every time a new video tutorial is uploaded. Thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you again in a new video tutorial soon. Bye bye.